In this video, we are going to see how we can determine enthalpies of reaction from bond dissociation energies or average bond energies. We will first talk about bond dissociation energy. If you are to break one mole of bonds, the energy required for doing that is called bond dissociation energy. And by implication, it's very clear that energy is being used. Therefore, this is an endothermic change. Another way of looking at the same energy is by calling it bond energy. Here, we're going to use the word average bond energy rather than bond energy because we are going to consider the average energy released when one mole of bonds are formed from its constituent elements forming the bonds that we are referring to. Let's take for example the OH bond in water. If one mole of OH bond forms, it is going to give out certain amount of energy and that value will be referred to as the average bond energy. Or if you consider methane, it has four CH bonds and the energy released when one mole of CH bonds are formed is referred to as the bond energy. What these two definitions also imply are bond dissociation energy would be endothermic and bond energy would be exothermic. Here we're going to look at how to determine how, how we can determine the enthalpy change for a reaction if you know the bond energies or average bond energies. In this case we are going to use only positive values for the bond energies and then we will use an equation that is appropriate. In the second method we can actually assign the energies certain signs based on whether the change is endothermic or exothermic. Bron bonds broken can be considered to be endothermic changes and bonds formed can be considered to be exothermic changes. So if you actually identify the bonds that are being broken and the bonds that are being formed, multiply them by appropriate coefficients and total the total value, you should get the enthalpy change for the reaction. And if you use only positive signs, we can use this equation. Delta H0 reaction is equals to bond energy of reactants minus bond energy of products. What you may want to recall is in Hess's law we have a very similar equation where we say delta H0 is equals to enthalpy of formation of the products minus enthalpy of formation of reactants where we use products and reactants and enthalpies of formation. Here on the contrary when we are determining enthalpy changes from bond energies we write the equation differently, assign them all positive signs and then we will say delta H0 reaction is bond energy of reactants minus bond energy of products. Make sure you remember that. Here are the different methods that you may have used to determine enthalpy changes. First one was you use calorimetry where Q is equal to MC delta T was the equation that you used. Second one has this law of summation of heat and or heat of formation data. We use the equation addition method and we use the equation delta H0 reaction is equal to products minus reactants. And the third method is what we are really talking about today bond dissociation energy or bond enthalpy method. Here, look at the difference in the equations. Delta H0 reaction is equal to sum of the enthalpy of the reactants minus products, where reactants we imply the bond energies of the reactants minus bond energy of the products. All values are positive signs. Or rather, all values are assigned positive signs. This is the definition again. 
towards bond dissociation energy and bond energy. Bond dissociation energy implies energy required for breaking the bonds, so they are endothermic. Bond energy is energy released when one mole of the bonds are formed, therefore that is exothermic. Here we consider only a single type of bond. What water molecule for instance has OH bonds in it. If you calculate the amount of energy released when one mole of OH bonds are formed, that will be referred to as bond energy of OH bond. Or if you consider methane, there are four CH bonds and the energy released when one mole of CH bonds are formed is called bond energy. And if you are breaking the bonds, it will be called bond dissociation energy. The simplest way to determine enthalpy change from bond energies from this equation which we had seen earlier. Delta H0 reaction is equal to sum of the bond energies of the bond broken minus sum of the bond energies of the bonds formed. All values are given positive signs here. As stated earlier, breaking a bond is endothermic reaction, therefore positive. Delta H or Q is positive. Forming a bond is exothermic. Uh, is an exothermic reaction, therefore Q will be negative or delta H will be negative. Here you are expected to calculate the enthalpy change when one mole of HCl is formed from hydrogen and chlorine undergoing a chemical change. So this is a problem that you're going to solve. Notice that the equation is written as half H2 plus half Cl2 giving you HCl meaning we need only one mole of HCl bonds. In order to obtain one mole of HCl, you need half a mole of hydrogen and half a mole of chlorine molecules, both of which are diatomic. Bond energy of H2 is 436 kilojoules per mole. That is, if you were to take one mole of hydrogen gas, you would need 436 kilojoules to break the bonds. But you only need half a mole here, notice that. Again, bond energy of chlorine is given for you is 243 kilojoules per mole. To break one mole of CL CL bond, you need 243 kilojoules. And the bond energy of HCl, one mole of HCl rather, is 432 kilojoules per mole. So we are going to apply the previous equation to see if you will get the desired result. Here is a solution. Balanced equation, half mole of H2 plus half mole of Cl2 giving you one mole of HCl. The first thing to do is change the hydrogen gas into hydrogen atoms. If you have one mole of hydrogen and if you supply 436 kilojoules, it will change it into two moles of hydrogen atoms. Same is the case with chlorine. You take one mole of chlorine molecules and change it into one mole. You break the one mole of bonds, you will get two moles of chlorine atom and the energy required is 243. Again, if you take one mole of HCl and break them, it gives you one mole of hydrogen and one mole of Cl. Delta H would be 432 kilojoules per mole. This is what the data tells you. Now, we want to calculate the net energy change for the balanced equation that is given to us. Therefore, we take half a mole of hydrogen and half a mole of chlorine, which are both the reactants, therefore half times 436 kilojoules per mole, plus half times 243 kilojoules per mole. Those are the bond energies of the reactants and subtract it from the bond energy of the product, which is one mole of HCl, 432 kilojoules per mole. And the difference is going to be minus 92 kilojoules per mole. Here, all values have been assigned a positive value or positive sign. And this reaction is an exothermic reaction. So this is the first method being adopted for finding the enthalpy change of a reaction using bond energies. Always while reading a problem, you need to know what information you're using. So this is a bond energy problem or rather using bond energy to determine enthalpy of reaction. This is the second possibility or second method, an alternate method for solving the same problem. We consider breaking of bonds as endothermic reactions 
and forming of bonds as exothermic reaction, if that's the case. We write the reaction again. Same concept, half a mole of hydrogen reacts with half a mole of chlorine to form one mole of hydrogen chloride. Changing one mole of hydrogen to two, to two moles of hydrogen atoms would be requiring 436 kilojoules. And for changing one mole of chlorine to two moles of chlorine atoms, it would be 243. And if you break or combine one mole of hydrogen and one mole of chlorine to give you one mole of HCl, that will give off 432 kilojoules per mole. Notice that the sign is negative for the formation of one mole of HCl. We're going to look at the net change. We are going to take half a mole of hydrogen and half a mole of chlorine, therefore the energy required, which is the endothermic change, is half times positive 436 kilojoules per mole plus half times 243 kilojoules per mole for chlorine plus you are adding it to the energy released which is for the for one mole of HCl which is negative 432 because we're considering it an exothermic reaction. The net change is still minus 92 kilojoules per mole which is the same as this answer you got for method one. So you may use the first method or the second method but you have to be clear in your statements as to what concept you used while solving this problem. So you have two methods for determining enthalpy change for the reaction if you are provided with bond dissociation energies or bond energies. That's it for now. If you like the video, rate, comment and subscribe. Mm -hmm.